previously on the Storm Mythology series. Aurora Monroe, the orphan princess of an ancient royal bloodline of sorceresses, warrior queens, and wind riders, has been the X-Men known as Storm, mistress of the elements for over seven months. To help her acclimate to life in America and to deal with the death of Thunderbird, Storm's best friend Jean Grey hosted a girls' night out with her roommate Misty Knight and Misty's friend Colleen Wing. The night did not go as planned, ultimately landing Storm on S.H.I.E.L.D.'s watch list. Also still mourning the death of John Proudstar, Cyclops, in a fit of grief, unwittingly destroys a prehistoric tomb covered with mystic symbols, and he has not been seen ever since. After the ethereal being known as Gaia inhabited the earth and brought life to the planet by mating with the Demiurge and then filling the planet with magical energies. After giving life to her siblings, the Elder Gods sent Chithon and Oshter. After the lingering magical energies of Gaia and the Demiurge continued to rapidly produce a multitude of other magical beings. After their godly civil war, to escape the wrath of Gaia's most powerful child, the Demigorg, the Elder God Chathon weaved a spell, allowing him to escape from the Earth to another dimension. Once there, however, Shathon found himself somehow trapped in this new realm. Over time, to satiate the Elder God's need of worshippers, Shathon sired the Nagarai demons and populated the realm to its brink. And to rule over his demon spawn, Shathon created his most powerful child, the demon lord, Kerok, the devourer of souls. And after a millennium amongst the stars and the astral plane, Ashta returned to this realm and was rechristened and worshipped by early man as the bird goddess. Eventually, Kierok and his Nagarai brethren returned to this dimension and ruled the earth. Their reign was one of terror. Kierok and the Nagarai treated humans as their slaves and their prey. And after centuries of torment and being fed upon, for a time, Mankind was collectively mad. Ultimately, it was a band of winged men called the Birdmen of Akamat that drove Kierok and the Nagarai demons back into the flickering realm. Birdmen, which would soon come to be known as angels. Birdmen created by the benevolent hands of the elder goddess herself, Ashta in her newest guise as Mat, the Egyptian goddess of truth. As Mat, Ashta's birdmen, who had once been led by the archangel Lucifer himself before his fall, sealed the points of Chathorn's re-entry portals with stone corns carved with mystical symbols. However, over time, whether by natural disaster or the naivety of man, those corns have been destroyed, reopening Chathorn's portals, uh, allowing his spawn to return to this dimension to wreak chaos and feed upon man. 
unfortunately for man, at the Nagarai demons as every return, Oshta has been there to fight back the demonic forces of her evil brother. And after millions of years of intricate machinations of an ancient royal bloodline, finally came Oshta's most powerful warriors, the Wind Riders. First and foremost of the Wind Riders was the Rain Queen Aisha of Balibedu, born of a human sorceress and a fourteen father. And like every half fourteen, half mortal progeny, Aisha is born with white hair and blue eyes. She is the first of her bloodline to bear the signature features of all Wind Riders to come. For 5,000 years, Aisha banished the thorns and the Gairai demons back into the corns, extending her life and amplifying her powers and spells simply by calling upon the name of the Moanam Kim Gali, the Bright Lady. The Kenyan name for Oshter. Princess Ashake of Egypt, the Wind Rider and Sorceress Supreme, descendant of Aisha of Balabedu, held the responsibility of fighting back Shathorn's forces for 1,000 years. She too extended her life and amplified her powers and spells by calling upon Mat, the ancient Egyptian name for Oshter. Today, Princess Ororo Manro, the current Wind Rider, the descendant of Ashoke of Egypt, the worshipper of the Bright Lady, awakens to the beauty of autumn. The fall season had come earlier that year. Ororo remembers. The September apples were hanging heavy in the orchids. The trees on both sides of the river ablaze with a thousand myriad fires. A thousand myriad shades of death. I was beginning to know death well, or so I thought. It had been weeks since Thunderbird died, but the memory still haunted me. But haunted most of all was Cyclops who, at that moment, was taking a stroll on the mansion's grounds. Inside the X-Men mansion, my friends and I were coming to end of yet another six-hour danger room training session. And while my heart still yet ached, I was enjoying showing the guys what I could do. Fun and games, X-Men style. Having caught him by surprise, Colossus swats Wolverine away with his full strength. Landing on his feet, Wolverine unsheaths his unbreakable adamantium-laced bones, and he smiles. As he prepares to lunge at Colossus, uh, Storm intervenes. Calm yourself, Wolverine! Storm orders. Wolverine advances anyway, and Storm blasts him back with a gust of hurricane winds. Then she flies off again, skillfully soaring through lasers and destroying blasters. Observing the morning's training and Cyclops' absence, uh, Professor Charles Xavier and longtime friend Sean Cassidy discuss Xavier's unusually fatigued disposition. Yes, Sean. <sighs> I am tired. Xavier responds to his old friend. These last few weeks have not been pleasant ones. I have not slept well in almost a week. Otherwise, I have been busy using my resources and connections to keep S.H.I.E.L.D. off Storm's trail. But it's Scott I'm worried about. Xavier confides. Thunderbird's death has us all a little down. And although he's trying not to show it, 
Thunderbird's death has affected him deeply. He's starting to brood and make mistakes. If he does not ease up on himself and relax, I don't know if Scott will be able to continue to lead this new team. Just then, the doorbell rings, reminding Professor Xavier that it is now 4pm, and he is expecting company, the school's new housekeeper. Sean, if you would not mind, Xavier asks. Sean rushes to the door as the doorbell continues to ring relentlessly. He opens the door and is instantly smitten by the new housekeeper, who introduces herself as Moira McTaggart. It is night now, the quiet end to a long, strenuous day. A time to relax over a good meal. A time for Storm and the X-Men to get to know their new housekeeper. And while Banshee and the others are obviously taken with the beautiful Scottish woman who tells them that she has a long history with their professor. Aurora? Not so much. Professor? If you are so intent on keeping the existence of you mutants a secret from the world, Aurora inquires. If anonymity is your greatest weapon against those that hate and fear you mutants, why reveal your true natures to this housekeeper? With all due respect, that, Aurora, is my business. Xavier tells her. But rest assured that Moira can be trusted. Our secret is safe with Moira McTaggart. He says safe unto death. He explains to Storm that Moira is a very dear friend of his. The two have been friends and colleagues since university. And as a favor for Xavier, Moira has come to look after the mansion and the X-Men while he is away on a much needed vacation. Nonetheless, have you seen Scott anywhere? He asks Sororo. Suddenly they are all startled by a noise, uh, accompanied by a blazing uh, scarlet flash from just outside the window, followed by the sound of shattering glass as Cyclops crashes into the room through the window. My god, Scott! Xavier yells, Wolverine, Colossus and Sean all rush to the aid of their deputy leader. Are ye all right, young lad? Do not try to get up. Just rest easy and ye be fine. Cyclops, his battle uniform torn and tattered, murmurs that he does not understand. It was right behind me, coming up fast. It should be here any second. Correction, Cyclops. It is here now. What the hell is that thing? Wolverine gasps as the wall crashes, and he and the other X Men look upon a hideous crimson giant, one eyed, horned monster. The monstrosity lawfully introduces itself. Little animals. It calls them. Look upon the child of an elder god, the lord of Ingare, and thanks to the young one, I have finally returned. And I hunger. Oh, how I have yearned for human meat, for the sweet taste of your frightened souls. <laughs> Staring into Cyclops, Kirok licks his lips. Come, my list one. You who have awakened Kirok before his time. 
My brother is what I never taste. Shut up. Cyclops so shouts as he blasts the demon to no avail. To me, my X-Men. Professor X commands. Attack together as Scott and I have trained you. You speak as the leader, old oh, legless one. Kier of Growls. I shall devour you myself. He advances toward Xavier. Not while Storm is alive to stop you. Storm defies, uh, intervening between Xavier and the Demon Lord. But unbeknownst to Storm, uh, Kierok immediately recognizes the current champion of his father's hated sibling, uh, Ashtar the Benevolent. A Windrider! Kierok roars! Storm, regroup with the others. My powers will protect me. I am in no danger, but you are. Disregarding Professor X's orders, uh, Storm blasts the demon with lightning. Unfazed, Kierok powers through her lightning and swiftly claws her. You're too slow, Windrider. Kierok snarls. Winged one, you have been touched by an elder god. Kierok says as he approaches his wounded prey. Your predecessors were stronger, faster. You wind riders have stood in my way for far too long. Your death will be a revenge for my exile. Rejoice, Wind Rider. I will be quick, meat. You may thank Kierok for his kindness. Storm will thank you for nothing, monster. Colossus shouts as he joins the battle and furiously strikes the demon lord. You threatened my dearest Aurora and tried to kill her. Colossus shouts between punches. That Colossus will not allow. Storm warns her young friend to be careful, but Colossus effortlessly batters Kierok. His final blow sends Kierok crashing through the wall of an adjacent room. Do you have a mistake, Kierok, so easily defeated? Are you such fools? He laughs as he rises from the debris. I am a child of the Elder God, the Dude. My brethren and I once ruled this realm of yours. Hail the return of your master's meat! He tears off a section of their metallic floor and tosses it with all his might against Colossus. Colossus is struck and he slams against the wall. Unconscious. I can never be defeated. Never! Enter Nightcrawler. He strikes with all his speed and might, yet he is taken out with a single stroke from Kierok. Next, the Wolverine strikes. To Kierok's surprise, Wolverine's adamantium claws hurt him. Kierok throws Wolverine to a wall. But thanks to his healing factor, Wolverine recovers quicker than Kierok expected. Only now, Wolverine's animal instincts have taken over and he enters a berserker rage. He slashes Kierok relentlessly until seconds later, Kierok lay lifeless, shredded on the floor. Just behind Wolverine, Storm and the others stand silently in shock at his savagery. That is until behind Wolverine, there is a hissing sound. The sound of a swirling supernatural 
Energy. Kill.